Warning, this podcast contains adult material and is not suitable for anyone under the age of 18. You have been warned. Do you like movies? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. What do you think about horror movies, blood, guts, and mayhem? Groovy. Then, sit back, relax, and listen to the Dead and Rotting Podcast. So I'm here with the on the Dead and Rotting podcast with my guest here. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourself tonight and letting us know a little bit about you. Hi, I'm Anna Zayden. I am an actress, model, I make music, and an artist. <laughs> and I used to be a body piercer, so that's pretty different from the work of body piercing. So what got you started in the, the film business? Well, since I was a kid, I wanted to be in it, but living in Mississippi, it's, it wasn't really an option. So when I was 25, I met Donald Farmer, and he told me he had a role in one of his movies for me, which was Chainsaw Cheerleaders. And I've worked with him like three or four times total. Uh, he hooked me up with James Balsamo while I was in New York, so I got to work with him twice. And pretty much... I network through Facebook as well as IMDb Pro. But acting, I don't know, I remember when I was a kid, I used to set up a box with the front cut out and act like I was in the TV. So that was something I always told my parents. I was like, I'm going to be an actress. <laughs> nice. I was going to ask you how many how many movies have you done with uh, with Donald? Uh, yeah, I think three or four. And you got one coming up too, as well, right? Uh, Darby's. Yes. Uh, is it that Scream one House? is Darby's Scream House. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I got to play the kid sister Tripper. Nice. Which is funny because I'm way older than the girl that played Darby, <laughs> <laughs> but I was her little sister, so I'm like, okay, we can work with this. <laughs> so, um, what are some? I know you said you were from Mississippi, and we're here. We're here in Natchez, Mississippi. So really, yeah. Where whereabouts <laughs> Mississippi? Where you where you from? I'm in Belzona. Belzona. So is that? Yeah. It's is that between North? Yazoo and Indianola. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's it's a town that if you drive past it, you won't even notice. <laughs> sounds like where I grew up. I grew up around the, <laughs> the Gulf Coast there, between the uh, Gulf Coast and Mobile. So ah, uh, little, cool. Little little town there. Um, nice. But yeah, we moved over here to Natchez, and it's it is like you said, it's very sparse when it comes to movie stuff. So I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is when I met Donald, I was living in Tennessee, and evidently there was this whole movie world in Tennessee that I just found out about when he approached me at work. So I was like, oh, "Wow, okay, I had to come to Tennessee to start acting." And see, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that Tennessee was was happening like that. Yeah. Acting, modeling's really big in Tennessee. Oh, okay. Like alternative models and stuff all over the place. (laughs) So what attracts you to a movie role? What what gets you really wanting to get involved with a movie role? Well, I like pretty much, like a lot of my movies I've been in, I've made up the parts. (laughs) But the ones that were scripted, it's just like like Tripper in Darby's Scream House. I only read a few lines. I was like, okay, I definitely want to play this because she was like really quirky. She's a troublemaker. All the things that I'm not. <laughs> so I, I found it really fun and kind of challenging. Now in Chains All Cheerleaders, the first one, what drew me to it was I was going to play a witch. <laughs> so oh, I was nice. like, oh, I can play a witch. Let's do this. <laughs> Nice. So how do you get most of your roles? Do you get them uh, through networking? Through, when you said IMDb? Networking, usually. Yeah, IMDb, I've gotten 
one or two things from that. Uh, mostly Facebook and Instagram. Um, I am on TikTok, but I haven't really used that as a movie breakthrough. So it's like Facebook's the main place that I find play parts. I'll just notice the castings in different groups. I'll, if I know a, a director is doing a certain movie that I want to be in, I'll contact them, ask if they're taking auditions, stuff like that. That's cool. I know I've I've kind of started dabbling in that, and I didn't realize you're right. There's a whole lot. It's like a whole other world out there on, on Facebook getting involved with movies yep. and stuff. Definitely. Um, <laughs> so I, I saw on your IMDb page that you are um, – wrote a part and directed uh it looks like a part in uh a movie uh, i think it was called i wrote it down here on my handy dandy notebook um topless taurus tomb of terror yes i had two fake commercials in there and i made up the lines to all of them and one of them the one in one nine i think it's one nine hundred uh Madam and Anya that one she has like kind of an accent and well the first one does too the first commercial was da data mate Becky Lou Becky Lou was this character that me and one of my friends created when I was a kid she's super country and what made it best for that part was my sister where I was staying at her house she had a chicken so I'm like I'm putting the chicken in the movie <laughs> So I'm sitting there, I'm like, hey, this is my chicken, Chicky Wicky. <laughs> so it's like, eventually the chicken got bored and he left, but it was it was all coming to me as I did it. I didn't even spend time writing out a script for it. <laughs> so nice. The Madame Anya, the same way. I just started talking to the camera. And when he gave me the writer's credit and directing credit, I was like, oh, wow, okay. I realized I wrote the script for that. <laughs> That's cool. That's kind of like some improv stuff. Yeah, and I love improv. <laughs> so what what is some of your favorite things about making movies? I like getting to meet people that are in the industry. Like on Darby Scream House, I've been friends with all the girls on Facebook. And it was my first time meeting any of them. So I was super nervous, but at the same time, I was like, I'm a fangirl. <laughs> so I was just like, oh my gosh, it's you. You're real. But um, I don't know. It's like, I like working on movies. I like becoming someone else. It kind of gets me out of my own head space to where I can become someone. And then you can sort of, I guess, you've gotten the uh, go-ahead to do any kind of improv stuff that you want in most of the movies, or are they kind of like strict um, by the script? Well, it depends on the director. Some want to stick to the script. Some say oh, it's okay if you change it a little. But the parts that I wrote and did myself were like, there was one for James Balsamo, um, Hollywood Werewolf. I made it up. I was in Mexico. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll take that part. That sounds fun. So that went, I went a bit nuts with the, the lines that I was saying. So, And we also had to do it in front of people where I was outside because I wanted an outside setting for that scene. But that one pretty much it was it was a challenge putting myself and I also came out with bruises. <laughs> Usually oh, when I act I I end up getting banged up. Oh goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like that would be um that would be extra charge. You'd have to <laughs> have to get them to charge <laughs> As That's long more. as they give me a Band-Aid, it's okay. <laughs> like Darby's Scream House, I ended up messing my back up so bad oh, that goodness. I could barely breathe at one point. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. So what what is uh, your character in uh, Darby's Scream House? I play Tripper Darby, okay. which is the little sister of what would be Barbie. Right, okay. <laughs> okay, nice. And I'm bringing a lot of chaos to the whole storyline. <laughs> nice. And when, yeah. when is that supposed to come out? Um, I think this year. I'm not sure exactly when yet. Okay. He is doing the editing right now. Okay. And I think he has a few more scenes to get, and then he'll be good to go. So, But could, hopefully soon. <laughs> right. And I think he's busy, too, with um, 
I think he's starting Shark Exorcist too. I think I saw on his yes. Facebook. So he's he's busy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he stays busy. <laughs> he also has um, what's the other one? Amityville Aliens. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one that he's one. still getting the parts for. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, what are some other projects that you got going on right now that you can talk about? I know you may not be able to talk about all of them, but. Yeah. Um, the other one I have right now is, it's a, t- I guess, a web series. And it's called Empire Down. It's a kind of like the devil and the queen of the devil. <laughs> Nice. And pretty much from what I, I know, I haven't seen the script yet because he's still getting it all t- tailored to what we need. Um, pretty much my character goes nuts on the down below and comes up and like starts wrecking havoc. Nice. And so this is going to be a web series? Yes. Cool. Right now there's six episodes that are planned for the first part. And we're just going to see how it goes from there. So where would we be able to find that at? What um, um once it gets that live? I think it would probably be DVD. I'm not sure oh, if okay. he's going to release it on any of those streaming sites. But once I find out, I will let everybody know. Sweet. So, um, what is I guess uh, there may be more than one, but what would be some of the tough stuff, the hard things that are involved with uh, dealing with movies that you've run into? Like. Um, Hmm. pretty much not being nervous in front of the camera because I go through a good while of being nervous so sometimes I'll take a camera and start talking into it just to kind of hype myself up to get ready for the scenes the nervousness gets me and pretty much I don't know it's, as long as there's no drama on set I'm good yeah definitely nobody likes that at work no <laughs> Those would be the two hardest things to deal with is drama on the set and like not being comfortable enough to not show that I'm nervous. So I I noticed also on your IMDB page, it said that you, you have done um, some podcasting stuff yourself. Yes. I, I do uh, frights of the round table 2.0 with Jonathan Moody. And that's, I do a couple of different, like sections of his indie film cafe which is on i think it's on a bunch of podcast sites as well as youtube oh nice but on youtube he started putting the video up there's one that everybody should see called that where we did we review excuse me we reviewed the wizard of oz and there was one part in there i was just like mocking the cowardly lion well, my co-host just lost it in the middle of it because I was singing the song that he, the Cowardly Lion did. He just he jumped from the camera and was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like podcasts, I like them more that we're doing them with video than I did before because we were just using telephone. And I have ADHD, so my mind would wander in the middle of the interview. <laughs> I feel that I've done, but we like review all kinds of movies, indie movies, as well as like, there's one part called Hollywood knockbusters. That's what we're supposed to be Hollywood blockbusters, but they never reach their goal. Okay. So what would an example of that be? Um, blank man was one. Oh, I love that. Yeah. (laughs) And we, I watched it again because I watched it when I was a teen so I didn't remember much. I watched it again. I was like, okay, this movie's good. It really is. But we also have Tubi Tuesday where we review movies on Tubi. So that's pretty fun. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Uh, Tubi's got to be like my go-to streaming service here lately. They have so same much stuff here. on there. I mean, you got to yeah. put up with the ads, but at the same time, I put up with the ads on pretty much all the other it's but they have such an awesome selection of movies especially if you like yeah. if you like low budget horror movies 
it's just like a never ending catalog. I, I had looked at my list the other day and I'm like, I'm never going to be able to watch all these movies. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep adding them. I keep finding them. Like, oh, that I looks good. Too, but then I, I go back it. and it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so many to watch. <laughs> yep. And that's the thing. It's like weekly. They have some new ones every time and you just trying to decide which one to start with. <laughs> exactly. And now they have like their own, like to be, uh, movies that they're making and they c- keep kind of putting those out and uh they're not too bad they're they're pretty decent nice. pretty decent i haven't watched any of those i had to check them out <laughs> so uh i have to ask this question of everybody and a lot of people have more than one answer but what would be your favorite horror movie my favorite huh <laughs> Got two answers for that. Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, and Ginger Snaps. Nice. Those are kind of head in head for me. Like, I love Ginger Snaps because I love the werewolf transformation. And Nightmare on Elm Street, I've been watching that since I was five. <laughs> he was the first horror movie I ever saw. And you can't beat the classic. I, I just kind of forget that they did that remake thing. But Oh, man, it came on the other day, and I tried to watch it. I just That's rough. <laughs> couldn't do it. It's rough. Oh, yeah, it's about, like, the remake of Chucky. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. It was just yeah. weird. <laughs> the doll was weird. Yes, I was it like, was. somebody brought that in my home. I burn it. <laughs> I, buddy, that, I don't know, so weird. But yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. It's, this is uh, the first time that I've thought about uh, Ginger Snaps in a long time. I, I really like that uh, movie. And I think they made like yeah. a sequel as well. I don't know if I ever saw Oh, yeah. We not. did reviews on YouTube for both the sequels. Oh, okay. So they had two sequels. Oh, man. Yes. There behind. was a Ginger Snaps back, which was where the sister that you, I think they grabbed hands in the original. Okay. Well, her sister got the werewolf gene. <laughs> Okay. And they show her transformation, but it wasn't as pretty as the transformation for Ginger Snaps 1. And then the third one, they go back in time to kind of the cowboy and Indian days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna and that one had out. a semi-transition into the werewolf, but she never fully changed. Hmm. But all of them were really good. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and watch it now. I, I remember watching it when it first came out, and I was like, man, this is this is badass for, you know. Yeah. And it kind of went under the radar. And, uh, and Yeah. The only way I found that was I was in our video store when I was working there, and I went to the back room, which everybody thought was naughty movies, but it was just cassette tapes, like the VHSs. And I was like, what is this? So I started renting movies from the back room. And that's how I found Ginger Snaps. After that, I bought the DVD or the, yeah, I bought the DVD online. I also bought the VHS. (laughs) So I actually bought the VHS from the video store I worked at. And they were like, what is this? I said, you've never seen it? It's so good. Then they all wanted to see it. I was like, no, this is my copy. (laughs) (laughs) I uh, miss video stores. Oh, me too. <laughs> and and just tapes and DVDs. I, I remember um, the you could get five for five bucks. The yeah, the ones that weren't the you know the hot movies. They're the ones that's been out for a while. You could just go and get. Man, I would rack up on some movies. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, where um, where can everybody find you uh, online to f- to see where oh, excuse me where they can find out what you're doing and your projects and stuff like that? Okay, I have Facebook. I'm Anna Zaden, X A D A E N, and um, on Instagram is if you type in the at, put Anna Zaden number one the actual number that one I, my original got hacked so I had to choose another little logo or not logo um, name I'm on TikTok under Anna Zayden let's see what else Snapchat but I don't really use that I'm on YouTube I have songs I sing on YouTube 
and pretty much you can type in my name and find me all over the place. Nice. The only one that's going to be a little different is pretty much the Instagram, just because it's got the one behind it. Okay. A lot of people have said they tag me and stuff, and I'm like, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they tell me they just put Anna Zayden, and I'm just like, oh, no, there's a one after. Ah. Uh, yep. Yeah. My... But I'm also on music sites, too, like Band Lab and um, what is the new one? Is it... I can't remember the new one. <laughs> Let's see. Is it called... Is it called Bandcamp? Is that what it is? No, wait. No, Band Lab. Band Lab. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of something else. Oh, <laughs> SoundCloud. That's yes, the other one. There I'm... we go. Yes, I do have SoundCloud. Same name. Nice. So, yeah. what what kind of stuff do you sing on there? <laughs> um. Well, I've been making kind of industrial style music. That's kind of on the. I don't know. It's like I like to do metal stuff, but mix it with kind of softer voices awesome. and I also have karaoke on there from singing random stuff the most random stuff ever you can look on there and you'll find the Santa baby song that I sang <laughs> and then there's one by Pucifer so it's like okay these two don't match up <laughs> but my music it's like I don't know it's really kind of sexy music <laughs> okay. with kind of an industrial edge Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool. I'm going to have to check that out. Thank you. uh, I'll put those um, links in our show notes there so that people can go and find you. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. (laughs) Um, Pretty much I'm open for auditioning to anything anybody has. I would like to know about it, it, what it's about and everything, the character breakdowns. And... Just keep a watch out for the next movies and TV shows I'm out. that does it for the dead and rotting podcast this week i'm your host tim tanner as always if you want to check out what miss anna zayden is doing you can check the show notes and that gives you a link to her imdb page so you can keep up with her projects on there as always please like and subscribe to us on spotify we're trying to get those numbers up and as a special treat tonight miss anna zayden has given us permission to play her song the lovely gore which we'll be playing right after this. So please give it a listen. Have a great week. Tim Tanner, out.
like this now